This is Ethan, and I'm here with Dave, and together we are Dave and Ethan's 2,000-inch Weird Al podcast, episode 76-inch. On this week's episode, John Gurley and Zach Carruthers of the Grammy Award-winning band Portugal the Man return on the heels of Who's Gonna Stop Me, their brand new song featuring Weird Al Yankovic. It's Dave and Ethan's 2,000-inch Weird Al it's a podcast about Weird Al. Seriously, the whole podcast is about Weird Al. You don't have to listen, but we're glad you are. Hello, this is Al, and you're listening to Dave and Ethan's 2000-inch Weird Al podcast. Hello, hi, welcome to this week's exciting episode of Dave and Ethan's 2000-inch Weird Al podcast. For those of you expecting to hear part two of our definitive top five songs from Weird Al's Even Worse album, we ask that you please be patient as the exciting and controversial conclusion will be airing next week. I know what you're thinking. You already made me wait a whole week, and now I need to wait another week. Well, good news is you can listen to that episode right now if you are a time traveler. As you may know, there is breaking news that has been sweeping the nation since our last episode, 75 Inch, dropped last week. It was covered by Billboard, Rolling Stone, Spin, and our good friend, host of Mystery Science Theater 3000, and episode 15-inch and 40-inch guest Jonah Ray even talked about it in his awesome hour-long interview with Al that just dropped yesterday on Spin. Plus, it was shared on all of Al's social media accounts, and he even sent an email out to his newsletter subscribers all about it. If you haven't heard the big news yet, the Grammy Award winning band Portugal the Man just released a brand new song and video featuring none other than Weird Al Yankovic. It is pretty stinking majestic. The positive reviews and the attention that this song has been getting is phenomenal. Dave and I are beyond thrilled to welcome back to the program. These are the two guys who just came out with a brand new song called Who's Gonna Stop Me? John Gourley and Zach Carruthers from Portugal, The Man. How's it going, guys? Hey, great, man. Thanks for having us again. <laughs> this is so exciting. Yeah, happy to be here. Yeah. <laughs> we, we figured after we talked to you last time that we would never speak to you again, and it would just be <laughs> a, a flash in the pan. <laughs> but you guys are so generous. You guys came back. And not only that, you have a brand new song with Weird Al in it. Dude. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you had, you <laughs> hoped you'd never hear from us again. <laughs> oh, no, I didn't mean that. <laughs> Crossover. <laughs> we thought you guys would be deleting our numbers, you know, blocking us on Instagram. But... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I had, but apparently the email came through. Five times away. That's right. <laughs> So this is amazing news for, for people like Dave and I and fans of Weird Al and fans of Portugal the Man because it's it's two amazing powerhouses coming together once again for a brand new song. Tell us about Who's Gonna Stop Me. Well, we started writing this song. We wrote the song when we were in L.A. And, um, and we just, we knew it was something just completely special. We, uh, we were working with Jeff Basker, who's just an, unbelievable songwriter and uh we were writing lyrics with the, the infamous paul williams and the song came together and it just uh um man it 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 needed something and we had just been figuring out kind of what to do after you know something like like the, the hit that we have or something like what do we want to put out next and it's kind of a lot of pressure not really to like make something that'll sell, but just do something that's like really meaningful to us. Right. And so we started talking about just everything we love in the world and everything that's important to us right now. And it's songwriting, it's, uh, it's education, it's connection, and it's, uh, it's indigenous knowledge and up elevating indigenous voices and weird Al. Of course. We were just, we started thinking about like what, <laughs> What do we need? We never really make, we never really make something like, what does the world need right now? We're just like, what do we need right now? And this is what we need. This is just therapy for us, man. And we like well, to share well, let's it. be honest. The world needs more weird Al. Yes. And I, I yeah, feel like totally. these, these times, it's so crazy right now. Everything's so intense. And I mean, just to take you into the, the songwriting process, like the, the song 
the song is all about uh, fences and it's how we put up fences yeah. and we put up these walls mm-hmm. and how barbed wire and these fences were actually like the, the death of the cowboy. It was the death of Western migration. It was, I mean, it's, sorry to go into this. It's a, it's like a heavier song lyrically. It's, mm-hmm. it's yeah. about the death of nomadic culture and how we put up these arbitrary lines between us. I mean, mm-hmm. nothing is real. We just, we, go, we put up all these walls and, to me, this song about fences, it it needed that like gateway, which is Weird Al. Like Weird Al has <laughs> been the gateway to everything for everyone. Like, I mean, I, we talked mm-hmm. about it last time we were on your pod. Like my Christian neighbors reading Book of Revelations, like, you know, telling us like the world is going to end. Listen to Weird Al. <laughs> and, and he crosses all these like party lines political, religious, my most radical friends. I mean, when we told our friends that we were we were making a song with Beard Al, our most radical friends were like, oh, hell yeah. <laughs> I, I'm all about Beard Al. <laughs> and it, it just, it made so much sense to, to go to, to this guy. I, I We heard him in it from the second the song started too. I don't know what it was about the yeah. track. It just sounded like his voice. Oh, wow. I mean, from the very second the first demo hit, uh, we had we had kind of thrown this quick thing together, and I just remember laying in bed, listening to it, going, "This is totally Weird Al's voice. Like this is Al." So I mean, that's that's yeah. where his participation came in. It it is a more conceptual track, but I hadn't seen him on any anything like super serious. And oh yeah. It, the song being as serious as it was, it needed that playfulness. I mean, it's all it's all about that playfulness. And now, when and how did you uh, approach Weird Al about the song? Well, uh, it was through email. It was it's much the same way. Uh, <laughs> it, I mean, I was I was apprehensive about it because I I just again like I hadn't seen him do anything like this, and I just kind of reached out and was like, hey, hey man, would, would you be interested in? and sing on on a record i have like kind of a serious song i'd like for you to hear it and he's out dude he was psyched and that's just the way he's clearly always been that way i mean he made he made a a debate parody the (laughs) morning after the debate constantly working constantly moving (laughs) and always excited and yeah i mean it it couldn't have been better like it, it was just Preparing. Yeah, he is the great connector, you know. <laughs> and what was the contact like? Was it like, hey, Al, we have a serious song. We want you to to join it, or how did you approach him? I I think it was just see, we're such nerds, man. I, I again, <laughs> like to go back to our discussions. Like we've talked about this forever. Like Yoda is better than Lola. Uh, Al <laughs> has improved <laughs> on so many smash hits. Like like. Al can improve everything. And I just like writing with him. Like, I like the idea of Al coming into the studio. And that's initially what I had written him about in the first place was, I want to write music with Al. Wow. And it's so funny because he he, he does so much comedy writing, but it's, it, it always has a message in it. It always has something in there. And it's he's just such a special writer and so prolific. Yeah. So yeah, that was that was the initial contact. Was really just reaching out to him to see if see if he'd be interested in, in writing with us on the album. And this song just kind of popped up in the middle of that, mm. and it it did feel a little strange saying like, "Hey, we got a serious song. Do you want to be on it?" But it's 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 so fitting because we're, we're putting it out on Indigenous People's Day. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. uh, Indigenous focused and just the. the it, the message is so powerful. It's. It, I don't think this song would have worked. Like, I mean, I, it it didn't work before Al was on it. It didn't feel oh, right. It needed that that thing that he brings, that special light. It really is a remarkable song. I mean, Al aside, it's a remarkable song with the message, and then having the video with the visuals. It's a. It's just a stunning and very powerful song to listen to and to, to view. But then. Al being there, he's perfect. 
I, I can't describe how it's a kismet kind of a thing having Al in this video and all this stuff. It's just amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dude, his delivery. I just remember getting his delivery of the two. Yes. <laughs> he does like two yeah. high. It's, <laughs> it's so perfect. Like, yeah, there's no way we could have sung it like that. Like I, I tried yeah. singing it. Like I can't really get it, but here it is, Al. Could you, could you take a, a stab at it? And he just pulled this huge <laughs> swooping note. I mean, th that guy is just I I incredible. Like what, what an incredible voice. In incredible musician i mean that he, he is really untouchable in the music world i mean you look at his history of everything he's done like dude has had top 40 hits in every decade since he started and the fact that what he uses that power for the good he uses it for and the uh that's the thing we're all about with like the song being about fences and all these barriers and all these uh how things are so divisive we've always thought you know how music is such a big connector weird al is such a good part of that it's like finding common ground and to share an experience and nobody really does that like weird al and like it's yeah it's just perfect i mean he's shown up on a couple serious songs he did you know, background vocals for a Ben Fold song, and he's done like accordion on things here and there. But this, I think, is absolutely the the most prominent Al has been in a serious song. Did he comment on that to you guys? Like, hey, this is you know different for me, or this is something I've always wanted to do. What were his thoughts on that? Yeah, a little bit. You know, the thing that we talked about uh, initially going into it was he hadn't written a serious song since he was a teenager. Right. Like he just hadn't done it. And of course, he started out trying, uh, trying to do that and pursuing that. But he's so funny; like he just <laughs> couldn't help himself. He's yeah. got to like, yeah. be funny. And I don't know. The thing I just keep going back to with with him is it, all of his originals are amazing songs. Like, like totally. he knows songwriting inside and out. And to to approach everything he does, like. Of, of course he can play accordion on something. Of course he can do some background vocals. Of course he can do those things. It's just, why wouldn't you feature that? Like, why why not Like make yeah. it the reason that you have the song? I mean, he's, yeah. Al is a bigger star. Like, we could go to Rihanna. Like, we could go to whoever we want <laughs> for, for guest vocals. But <laughs> Al is bigger than all of that. And, and he's meant so much more to us. Yeah. He's meant so much more to kids. And it's it's still in all of us and again like he, i also think it's just amazing like bringing him and paul williams together like paul williams writing the lyrics and al singing totally. it is this <laughs> yeah. such a brilliant pairing magical two magical people yeah. that guy paul is such a pleasure to write with if i could ever be in the same room with those two guys i'd uh, be a real happy camper <laughs> Now, as you you two guys as big Weird Al fans, can you let us know what your reaction was when you found out that Al said, yes, I will do this? What was going through your mind? Uh, have you ever seen a kid eat ice cream or something like that for like, the first time? It's kind of like that. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was my so daughter happy. having an ice cream cone. My daughter yeah. eating an ice cream cone for the first time, and all of us watching her eat it on tour is how we all felt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's just a lot of this stuff, like I was saying, how like the therapeutic reason, and we don't really, we're not that kind of band. Like, we've never said that, that we like write music to make us feel better, do anything like that, or like to express something. But it is like, it's, it's things that get us excited. And, and we've been recording for a long time. COVID hit, you know, writer's block. Like, a, there's so much stuff going on. Yeah. And we're just like, God, it, we just, it it was really good. It was it was just a a frequency and an energy that just made like us all happy, and we're like, yes, we're gonna do something awesome with Weird Al. Yeah, I think and... we started it within the first month of of like lockdown, our quarantines and all that, and it yeah. was just this moment of like, oh my god, the world is ending. They have checkpoints on my street. Oh my, <laughs> like what's gonna happen? There's no toilet paper. There's no, we can't. We, we got to be get, buying canned food. Yeah. And we're in this like survivalist mode and we're just like, 
wait a second, where's Al? What is Al doing? Yeah. Let's get out. <laughs> he will save us. Totally. And, and and he did. We were just we were like in a in a spot and uh he just kind of came through and it brought like a whole new just energy to the band. It's 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 fun. It allowed us to like in a way like he and with this song too, he can take the lightness and take the weight off of the extremely heavy things. Yeah. And just, and that's how, you know, when you walk in, like ha- trying to have a hard conversation, humor breaks the ice, humor lightens the mood. It opens up people's minds and people's souls to be um, just more open. And I think that's like a huge thing that is, that is missed in so many areas and just the, the human part of it. And, uh, and I think that really helps And people I've always, me and my family have always used humor as therapy for sure. Mm-hmm. And, you know, in these times, you know, what else, if, if we do anything this year, as long as, you know, as long as we gave the world a little bit of this, we're, uh, we're pretty happy with our contribution to, uh, 2020 yeah. as, <laughs> as a bummer as everything else is. I'm like, <laughs> Hey man, we're trying over here. <laughs> Yeah, we're trying to bring Al out to break the algorithm. Just <laughs> totally, get everybody yeah. off. So, like, I I watch my, my side of it all day, every day. I it gets force fed to me. No, here's Al. Al is gonna be the the one thing that pops up in everybody's recommended videos. Yeah, <laughs> it'll be the one crossover. That's yeah. Like, oh, interesting. <laughs> yeah, let's see what something. happens. Now, there there is one part of the video that at first it seems really kind of funny and silly. And then it, it, it sort of dissolves and becomes really cool. And that's, you know, when Al is walking outside and he's doing like this really goofy walk and it, it's funny. And then it just, yeah. it transformed into like this really cool, like not goofy thing. And how, do, how is that captured? I'm, I, I can't, I can't understand how I, I see it. And I think it's funny, but then it's like, wait, this is not funny. It, well, it's really interesting because we were shooting yeah. all this. This whole video got shot at the beginning of, of lockdown. Right. And it, it, it took a lot of time in it, just getting everybody together because it's the, the indigenous focus, uh, getting people to dance and, uh, you know, just having all the faces in there. So we were doing this under this really extreme, uh, I don't know what's going to happen moment. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, just our buddies going down there to down here to shoot shoot Al at his house, and them sending me that footage. Like, I I remember them sending me that footage. Like, this is this is so brilliant because it's it's based around Al to it within indigenous cultures would be the coyote, and that's why the coyote is in the video so much. The coyote is the trickster. It's always messing with you. It's always playing <laughs> games. And th- that movement is just, it's, it's, it is perfect. I, I was hearing the behind the scenes. If you guys want a little bit of the behind the scenes. Of course. Al is so used to doing, uh, like, you know, funny videos. Yeah. So he Very was theatrical. trying to act serious. And uh, Aaron Brown, one of the directors, was there and he said, you know what? Like, I'll just throw things at you and you can act like that. Like, whatever it is. And I think at one point he, he was like, you're, like, you're a vampire. You're a vampire. <laughs> you're an L.A. vampire. <laughs> and that, that was part of that movement. Which, again, is just oh my God. It's so hilarious it to is. see Al act that out. <laughs> and then transform so perfectly into this just this massive, like, it's a, a kind of an 80s style structure. It's like a Phil mm. Collins type structure. And yeah. it's not like a traditional song, songwriting approach. And he he brought all of that. He brought the Peter Gabriel to it. It's mm. uh, yes. Al, dude. That dude is unique. Totally. So you guys weren't actually at the shoot. It was just, you know, the film crew and the directors. Yeah, we shot yeah. up in uh, up in Oregon where we lived, and he shot there. You know, clearly it was the travel and stuff. We couldn't. We had to do a lot of things remotely. Yeah, yeah movie magic. You know, yeah. Hollywood showbiz. 
I feel like you guys would like have an internal conflict of like, I kind of want to risk my life so I can be at Al's house for this filming. <laughs> oh, totally. We just don't want to risk it. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we'll risk our lives <laughs> totally yeah Please. just not it yeah. right <laughs> yeah we can't be responsible no. for getting weird out sick that would be uh, <laughs> that was another funny thing the conversations we were having with the director we were so protective of al <laughs> we we're like just make sure everybody wear a mask keep washing your hands do not get al sick <laughs> do not give him covid yeah <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> From all of us at Dave and Ethan's 2002 podcast, thank you for saving Al. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't let us down. So were all of uh, Al's scenes shot at his house? Uh, I, believe, I believe so. I, think, I, so. I, I yeah. think because of the way COVID was working, like we, we were really like, I, like all of our scenes were shot at my house. Okay. Yeah. So, oh, okay. But, but dude, that's the way we've always made videos. I mean, just for a little behind the, the curtain, like, Pretty much all of my videos have been behind my parents' house in Alaska or behind my house in Portland. Like, we so shoot much. everything literally in our backyard. That's amazing. Yep. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty funny when you when you start to see, like, all of the stuff like, coming together. It's, uh, it's fun to see your house in a different, different light. And tell me about the motorcycle scenes. Those are, like out of an action spy movie. They're really cool. How, how are you able to shoot that? Here, let me grab my Postmates real quick. <laughs> <laughs> we have this. some very talented, uh, uh, so that's a Honda, that's a Honda Ruckus that, uh, that we got for doing a, a Honda tour a long time ago that, uh, John said he would mention Honda every day of the tour and wear all their gear. And all they wanted was one of those little, uh, it's like a souped up moped. It's like it's a mix between a bike and like a oh, yeah. moped. And they're awesome. They're so, so cool. Rad. Can I tell you one thing about that ruckus? The whole time we were on the the Honda Civic tour, I kept seeing the commercial. Like they had an ad for the Honda Ruckus that would play behind us. And at the beginning of the tour, I was like, I'm gonna get them to give me one of those Honda Ruckuses. <laughs> and everybody in the band and crew was like. There's no way <laughs> every single day I would get on stage wearing a Honda shirt or a Honda jersey and be like, man, that Honda Ruckus, that's, the, that's quite the bike. A lot of Every drop. single day. <laughs> and it worked. <laughs> yeah, it did. It was so, so wild, though, because, again, everything shut down because because of quarantine. We have, like, obvious like protests in Portland yeah, happening. Yeah. It's uh in the news. Um so we were downtown. I mean we were just riding all over the place on this little ruckus, like wrong way down the one way street. Uh <laughs> cops are ignoring us. It <laughs> it felt it honestly felt like I mean we've been in some pretty rough areas and it felt like we were in one of those spots. Yeah. Uh, where we were shooting. It's pretty wild. And uh, yeah, I mean, the, the shot of uh, Akosha at, at the end, the, the dancing that, that's happening, yeah. that's right in front of the Justice Center. That's like where all those riots were, all the tear gas and everything oh, was wow. hitting. Mm -hmm. wow. uh, we just happened to wow. pop down yeah. there during the day when nobody was there. And uh, yeah, that's that, that is where all that in, intense, like, wall of moms and Whoa. protests yeah. have been happening. Bring some big energy there. Totally. Her dancing was incredible. Did you guys know her? Or did you reach out to her specifically for the video? Uh, we the didn't director, know her before. Yeah. But now. Yeah, yeah Josue. She's amazing. Josue yeah. Riva is um, one of the directors as well. Mm -hmm. And he knew her. And there's there's another really great connection with the, the dress that she's wearing. It's called a jingle dress. And it it's supposed to represent the Northern Lights and the sound that the northern lights would make mm -hmm. so it's it's got this like alaskan connection to oh. it and it's supposed to be healing as well and um th that was part of that dance at the justice center was to, yeah. to bring all of that together wow every one of those bells are rolled and uh and have a prayer spoken into them and then like every single one of them that's covered in the dress it's pretty mm -hmm. amazing that's so cool 
it, it's like when you when you feel the vibrations coming off that when you watch her when you're right there it's it's a thing that i can't fully describe but man it's a thing wow. beautiful so how much footage did you guys end up with? I'm, I'm curious of, you've shot in all these different places. It, it seems like you were at Al's house like all day. How much, how much footage did you end up with for this, you know, four four minutes and change video? Oh, we Probably shoot way too much. so much. <laughs> <laughs> we, yeah. Again, we shoot in our backyard for a reason. Right. <laughs> and, and it's because we're idiots and we're just like, Hey, let's go make a video. We'll figure it out. Like whatever happens, like, just shoot it, and we'll edit it together. I mean, all of our videos—it's—it's it's much like our songwriting process, which totally. everybody in my band can hate on it all day long and and talk about it. But if we go through these, like, okay, here's the song. Nope, that's not the song. I'm gonna do like a Motown version of that metal song, and then I'm gonna do a maybe an acoustic guitar version, maybe we'll do a pop version and we'll just see what kind of works best. And then we'll change all the lyrics at the end, change the chorus, <laughs> and it's a completely different thing. <laughs> so, totally. so that's like just always been our approach to things. I mean, the, every single video was a different cut at the very beginning. And this was no different. It was a totally different video at the beginning. And wow. it it all falls into place uh, just with as long as the concept is there, as long as you have a basic idea of what you want to do, like it, it'll take you there. And I, I think honestly, seeing Al's performance is what what pushed it to where it is. You know, we had shot all this stuff, and then we shot Al, and we we're like, "Well, Al's like clearly like Al and Akoshi are clearly the stars <laughs> of this video. So, like, how do we just edit around that?" And, I mean, it's, it is really perfect, like him shouting at the sky, like too high, gravity don't work anymore, <laughs> like all of that stuff. It's, it's, it is so the way we're all feeling at the moment. Yeah. Like we're sitting at our houses, just <laughs> like, please let me out. Can I see people again? Can I hang? Can we, can we get together? And I, it just felt good to make, to make something that was super positive in a time when like hell yeah i can write punk songs <laughs> like, we can write punk songs all day long and we could be angry and we could you know go throw whatever like we can do that stuff downtown it's but that's not what it really what it's about it's about bringing positivity and bringing some like positivity to what what is happening at, at home yeah like for for kids that are stuck on zoom calls for school for yeah. all of us more out <laughs> more out <laughs> we haven't touched on this yet but all the proceeds from this song are going towards dig deeps navajo water project and the confederated tribes of warm springs how did you guys get involved with that and why are those so important to you water man it's kind of important to everybody <laughs> and uh yeah, and, yeah there's, uh, <laughs> there's uh Jerry, with everything else that's going on, it's brought to life a lot of uh, uh, rough situations. And, you know, with the foundation that we've been doing, obviously the video, um, we've been doing a lot of partnerships with um, indigenous organizations. And uh, this this one just like it, it, it came to us at the same time. We we're just like, it all makes sense. It all fits together. And yeah, when it comes down to like figuring out the real basics of problems you know start with something you kind of start and end with things like water right and so yeah there's like navajo nation was hit super hard with covid um mm. the percentages were just way out of whack and the uh um because of you know treaties and sovereign nations you know working like the government using those whichever way kind of serves them better it's really hard to get ppe out there a lot of stuff and there's already like with hygiene it's obviously a big um, a big issue with this pandemic and navajo nation i think something like 30 percent um are without like running water and like access to clean water and there's a big problem in warm springs which is very close to home that's like just a couple hours from us and we've got friends there and uh yeah so it just um we knew we obviously wanted to, you know, make it a bigger thing, make something that we're proud of that everybody would uh, would kind of get behind. Mm -hmm. And 
you know, that was just a uh, good timing. And I, I would love to hear about this shirt that you guys are selling. I mean, obviously we're recording this before everything's come out, so we haven't seen it, but what can you tell us about this shirt with the proceeds uh, going to the same organizations? I mean, we, we've been working on this for a long time, the PTM Foundation. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to find ways to kind of extend what the band does to start benefiting more people and just start putting proceeds towards helping folks in in bad situations. I mean, a lot of the times when you when you work with foundations and charities, we, we've obviously done it a lot and been offered a lot of charity opportunities and it, behind the scenes they offer you so much money that it is it, it kind of makes you feel gross mm -hmm. <laughs> like when people offer us Definitely. a lot of money especially when we needed it like i mean we would turn down the shows because that money should be going towards whatever the project is like we shouldn't be mm -hmm. you, you shouldn't pay us 50 grand to play that show like that should that could build multiple wells out in warm springs. So that's that's just kind of the idea. Is like we we've been doing these like merch drops for a while now, so like treating it more like more like you would like seasonal like hoodies and long sleeves in the winter, and mm -hmm. not really basing it around tours necessarily. We, we just kind of like put out shirts. And this yeah. this drop uh, like uh, a portion and. 100% on, on one of the Biakoshia shirt is going to go to um, the same project. So that's that's just the, the goal and everything. And also with like with, with the t-shirts, another thing we've been doing is just always crediting everything. So it's just kind of awesome to have a shirt that has like shout out to Weird Al on it. <laughs> even if you can't put Al's yeah. picture on it, even if you can't like yeah, we can't really sell a Weird Al shirt, but we right. could say featuring Weird Al, and that <laughs> is amazing. I like, that does everything for me. So cool. <laughs> but we we framed the shirt in this like old movie poster kind of aesthetic, and it's really cool. It's like very punk, and it gives you the story of the jingle dress and everybody that worked on the video. Um, oh, wow, it's kind of everything. So. Yeah, it's like a, a limited shirt that's just going to come out with a video. Oh, I can't wait to get one. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah, super fun. And you said Wes is the one who designed it? Yeah, Wes Hubbard, yeah, Wooden yeah. Cyclops. Yes. He he worked on it. He does a lot of the drawings for us, so Wooden Cyclops. And he's actually done a bunch of Al posters. Did we talk totally. about the last yeah. time? We, we did, but I think it was before they actually came out. His are awesome. Yeah, oh, that's he's so amazing. Good. He did the most posters of any artist on the last tour we told we told me that he started like we started the band with him yeah like, he was our original keyboard player right and again like all of us alaskans like we're such huge al fans <laughs> i mean west wooden cyclops has a picture of him and his family with al dressed up as al and <laughs> he's in the video too yeah he's, like laying on his back with his kids yep yeah mm -hmm. he, he was so stoked that is so cool. I was going to ask you guys about that. Now, I mean, obviously you guys are in the video. Zach, you're like dismantling this fence and throwing it in the fire. So, so cool. You know, all this stuff. Are there other cameos that we should know about in the video? Uh, there there are a lot of, it, yeah, yeah, it's all of our friends. It, there's a lot of like Nicholas Galanin is in it. And he's like a, a, the craziest, like conceptual, like, like sculptures and just this like high concept uh, art all over the world and he's he's from alaska as well mm -hmm. he pops up in that video um danny cole who's who's done a bunch of art for us he shot a bunch of people in new york um okay. for the video too and and he's he's kind of in the video as well so danny cole and nicholas glenn are in there it's just kind of cool seeing everybody come together. I mean, there's a lot of people on our foundation. My daughter's in it. She's in like the very bottom right square when it does the gridded panel. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> so my my daughter's in there. <laughs> and again, like she she's anytime the song comes on, she just belts out the too high. Too... Gravity don't work anymore, <laughs> and it kills me. <laughs> and she freaks out too. Like 
dude, every every single morning, like all she wants to li- listen to is Weird Al. That's so and awesome. She's been getting more and more excited <laughs> every time she sees the video. She's like, "That's Al. That's Weird Al. <laughs> and that's me. We're the same thing." <laughs> the coolest kid in school. <laughs> yeah, she is. Yeah. Oh, I was wondering who is the guy. There's like a guy in the video who looks so much like Weird Al. He's got the Weird Al hair. He's got like a shirt that's very like Hawaiian shirt esque with the sunflowers on it. Oh, that's Danny. That's Danny Cole. Danny Cole. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is, that, is that who you're talking about? Yeah. <laughs> I saw that. I was like, is that Weird Al? <laughs> that's too funny. Like, like walking out of the the, the building at the yeah, end. Yeah. Yeah. Like towards the end of the video. <laughs> yeah. That's that's Danny Cole, and that's he's done a ton of art for us. He he's that yeah. kid, by the way, like that is a future great in the art world. Um, yeah. He had, I remember meeting him. He had DM'd us asking about a jacket I was wearing, uh, it, and it was so long ago, <laughs> <laughs> so long ago. This kid popped in. And he's like, like, hey, where would I get that jacket? <laughs> so I looked up the jacket. It was just this like old like walrus jacket. And looked it up. I sent him a bunch of links, and then I checked out his profile and just saw all of, all of his art. And this kid was like 16, 17 wow. at the time, something like that. And it was just like this really amazing art. So I, I, I reached out to him, and he's done a bunch of visuals for for us live on stage. Um, he's he's just on his way, wow. and it was. It was obvious the second I saw that kid that there was something else going on. <laughs> Man, good like, thing he reached out. <laughs> for a 16-year-old, <laughs> you are on something else. Wow. Oh, and how did you hook up with Coco Peterson, the artist for the cover of the song? Oh, that's so great, right? So good. Yeah, it's an amazing cover. Yeah, that that's awesome. Yeah, there's actually three paintings that she did, and... Coco Peterson is actually Cleon Peterson's daughter, who is an amazing artist. It has it, it, another yeah, person that's favorite. influenced us since the very beginning. Wow! I mean, he was he was a graphic designer at Toy Machine when we were in high school. So, like all the Toy Machine and like Ed Templeton stuff we were picking up, like, and we had to wear was him behind the scenes like helping out with with graphic design he worked with shepherd Ferry for a long time and i mean he's just a massive artist i mean that guy is so good and he's just he's so much i just one of my favorite people to hang with uh, he's a total nerd we're nerds <laughs> uh, and i had just seen the paintings his daughter had been making um, I would, she was she was posting up these these paintings and I was like, you know, it'd be it, it's so much better to go from from like each generation because the the album is all about generational connections. Right. So like yeah, you could ask Cleon to do it, but how much cooler to have like a kid paint, you know, John and Al together, <laughs> and. And just bring another layer to that that whole connection. I, I I love to see how kids interpret all this stuff and like what what she thinks we look like and <laughs> yeah, so cool. <laughs> so awesome. Yeah, I was psyched. She was she was down to do it. But there's there's three paintings, and I'll, I'll try to post those at some point so people can see the different the different setups. Mm-hmm. That's so cool. Very cool. I know we said this to you guys last time, and I'm going to say it again. Really want to see a physical release of the original Al remixes, and we'd love to see a physical release of this one. Is there any possibility we're going to get our wishes granted? Oh, dude, there, there is yeah. absolutely no way yeah. that, that I'm going to let anybody get off on that. That we are totally. going to make. Of course, I, I think I think they should be 45. Per, personally, I think they should be 45. Totally. Like, I think it should be seven inch or something like. You know, mm-hmm. just to really bring it home. That, that's what my daughter listens to. Like that's that's how we listen to Al at home. Really? And I, I, yeah, I want to be able to do that too. Oh, that's so cool! Great. So the new one will come out on a forty-five. What about the old remixes? We got to know about those. I think we'd have to go over it. So 
it, it'd probably be easier now since Al is uh, free of his contract. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It'd be a lot easier at this point. Um, it's everything's difficult when there's like other labels yeah. involved. Yeah. Cause if you're on Atlantic and he's, you know, where he's at, like it's, things get weird (laughs) you know no pun (laughs) so yeah hopefully hopefully we can get that done i i would like to see it i asked for that when we did it and it's yeah it has to be a physical release it has to i mean yeah we'll have coco do the cover for that too yeah gonna (laughs) keep coco involved (laughs) be so awesome you know, okay, this is this is kind of a weird question, but you brought up Atlantic Records. That's your record label. There's like some weird history with Al and Atlantic. Are you guys familiar with that whole thing? Oh yeah. <laughs> Has it come yeah. up? I mean, so just for, for people listening who are not familiar. Yeah, what is it again? I know there is, but I refresh. So Al did a parody of James Blunt's song, You're Beautiful, and James Blunt gave him his blessing to do it, but Atlantic Records came and they blocked it. So he ended up releasing it for free online, but because he now no longer had his main single to release, that's what pushed him to record White and Nerdy, which is, I mean, an amazing thing to have happened. But in, in the music video for White and Nerdy, as a reference to that whole thing, Al edits wikipedia page for atlantic records and writes you suck so (laughs) yeah (laughs) you know it's funny like the video treatment Uh, that went to atlantic records had al in the uh atlantic records suck t-shirt really (laughs) because there's like there's a photo (laughs) yeah (laughs) but that was the photo of al for the Atlantic Records, like, video treatment. Uh, <laughs> which I, th- I think the beef is squashed at this point. Uh, it makes it makes no sense to me. Like, I, I actually had a conversation about, about it after we got the, the song done. I was like, what, like, why wouldn't you want Al to, to work on anything? Right. I mean, like, if, yeah. if he does a parody of your song, it's, you're, you're selling it twice as song. much. So, you know, like, it's... <laughs> <laughs> it's a really big deal. I, I yeah, I, I'll never understand that <laughs> whole situation. But it, it was funny that that that's the. I'll, I'll find it for you. I would I'll love to see that. that over I would to love you. to see the, that. the treatment. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty funny seeing all that. Well, I I think you know you guys are are you know it's it's a very amazing cause you know getting the the water for the for the Navajo water project. But I think your next cause needs to be. Atlantic Records publicly apologizing to Weird Al. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know, Portugal well, man's got some pull. Well, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> I really need funny. that public apology. <laughs> I'll just get an intern at Atlantic to come out and do it. Yeah. <laughs> totally. On behalf we, of Atlantic Records. We, we were wrong. <laughs> That would be so gratif- gratifying as a Weird Al fan to see that. <laughs> oh, dude, if you know anything about A and R people, uh, they're never wrong. They have never yeah. been wrong. <laughs> that, that is one thing. And and if and if you do something right, they did something right. So that's just yeah, how it works. Totally. I'm curious to know what Al's response was to seeing the final music video. Uh, he, dude, he. He reached out so excited, and it's it's really hard to judge with Al because because he's always so excited and <laughs> so nice. It, it's one of those things like he messing with me. Yeah, is he messing with me, or is it actually this nice? But no, he he was just the whole arc of the video. I mean, the climax is it's. It, it was really emotional for me watching it and I didn't expect to be like moved by any of it just cause it's so rare with a music video to actually like yeah. convey emotion. Like it's, it's, it's easy to make shit look cool. Yeah. Uh, do you have to bleep that if I swear? Yeah, <laughs> uh, that's no problem. <laughs> um, you're cool. You're cool. Uh, it's, it's easy to make things look cool, but it's, it's, it's so difficult to convey emotion within that that time you know you have three and a half minutes four minutes to do that and just the way Akosha comes out and the way al's delivering it's 
you're like you can feel it yeah. like it's the, the energy oh, yeah. is there and i think that's what what al was seeing in it and that's what he responded to was it's a really powerful video yeah and i, I thought that was just super sweet and cool coming from al i mean that like i i, I trust trust him and it's it must feel different being in in like that that scene like what what we were doing with it but he was supportive 100 percent, like all the way and that's what i love about al is he doesn't really hold back i mean mm -hmm. it, he it's impossible for him to hold back <laughs> he is just exploding <laughs> with whatever emotion <laughs> he's feeling and it's almost always joy and yeah yeah so his his response was very positive and just again so cool getting that from al kind of that affirmation and did he know that you know that opening scene with him was going to have the drawings over him or was that a surprise to him uh it, it was all in kind of in the treatment that there would be some overlaid drawings and okay it's yeah again the, the coyote thing like he's the trickster yeah <laughs> And I think as it was coming together, I mean, he's he's probably stoked, I guess, <laughs> because that's the only thing I've seen of him. <laughs> totally, it's also it's the trickster, but it's also the maker of worlds, and it's like it it is like a it's an opening. It's like a a trickster, but through comedy, like we were talking about earlier, like opens up new possibilities, right? And which is what that's kind of all about. The the part before he goes outside and, and turns into the coyote where it's just his eyes. I got such strong vibes from the Eat It video <laughs> when he has the eyes at the end. Did you guys make that connection? Oh, I did too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did too. You, you never know when you send it to people because you, you have people do like the, the work in post. Right. So you just kind of mm -hmm. like... Okay, like I hope it looks cool. I hope it comes out right. But that's that was the exact same thing I thought when I saw. It. Like, yeah. Wow, you kind of nailed it. That's nailed so it. awesome. <laughs> the first time we see Al in the video, he's like going in his door, and there's these like amazing framed Hawaiian shirts. Did you guys get to see other footage or ask him about that? Um, I know you figured that's his thing. <laughs> <laughs> Good guess. <laughs> yeah i i think we pretty much i mean al is kind of a it, as you can imagine he's a one take type of person like he just he's so natural he, he's been doing it forever like he gets in front of a camera and there's kind of really nothing that you're gonna leave on the cutting room floor mm -hmm. like he just kind of does it right it, he reminds me a lot like just hearing hearing about it like i remember watching the behind the scene, like the director's commentary on uh, Austin Powers okay. growing up <laughs> and watching the director's commentary, like him talking about Mike Myers, like the opening dance scene, how he just nailed everything. Like he, he was doing it better than the, the dancers. And he was just, you know, one take. That's Al yeah. to me. Like Al is that. Like there's yeah. a couple of these people in this world and – we have two of them doing really great things like Austin Powers and Eat It. <laughs> now, there's a few shots in the video where I don't know if this was because it was filmed on like a phone or the, the video is kind of vertical. And then there's blurred out sides with these things written. What can you tell us about those parts? I know well, those, those are just uh, embracing the, like the, the times and how everybody is connecting now when they can't connect in person, you know, through mm -hmm. TikToks and Instagram and YouTube and through screens, you know. Yep. Sure. Yeah. So a lot of that that stuff was shot. Like we sent it to a bunch of friends, and I mean, initially there were a lot of because uh, the Imagine video came out around this time, and then right after that, who did the parody of the Imagine video? David Cross, Mr. Show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, with Al. <laughs> did the parody <laughs> with Al, yeah. and what we. So, so this is the initial, like, part of the initial concept was kind of like we were going to go super meta 
which is the most internet thing you can do, <laughs> which everybody yeah. was living in the internet at the time. So I was like, we should go super meta and go from the Imagine video to Mr. Show to this Weird Al music video that calls all the same people. So we had actually <laughs> called a bunch of like super funny, like rad celebrities wow. to, to <laughs> guest star in this. And everybody was down. And it just got to this point where I was like, okay, I, I, I don't think I even texted a lot of these people back after, oh, wow. uh, yeah. after we decided to change it. But, <laughs> but everybody was down. And as I was putting it together, I was like, you know, like if, if we, I don't want to take the focus off of Al and it, it, the indigenous focus is so much more fun and so much cooler because, because of the coyote angle and everything yeah. involved. And, it would have been funny to do like the, the meta version of like, just keep the meme running, like <laughs> throw it back through the ringer. Like let's get some Sarah Silverman and David Cross now. Yeah. Uh, that, that would have been pretty funny, but it just felt better to have this like more human right, connection. Right. It, it, yeah. it just, it just really allows that like not only Al to shine, but that, that thing that draws us all to Al. Like that, that's that thing that makes us all want to be around out. That's the reason celebrities don't want to talk to Portugal, the man. Like they want to, they're like, Oh, Al's doing something. Yeah, I'll do it. Like <laughs> count me in. So, I mean that just the way that was coming together, it was like, wow, this is super positive. <laughs> Everybody just wants to be in the video. And I was like, Oh, well, there's no way you could do this without Al. Let's keep it focused. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. In one of those shots where we, we see someone and, and there's stuff written on the side, if you look really closely, this is to our listeners, there is a spot that says Weird Al is my hero. And I think that's just an awesome little Easter egg to be in there. Oh, yeah. And it's true. I mean, we right. told you about our the drum head. We wouldn't be here without Weird Al. Yeah. And Al on our drum head for our first performance on the night show. I mean, that's it's it's so very true. And that's something that it just, it has never changed in this band. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've always been fans of Al going back to the very beginning of this band. I mean, you find it in interviews and it's with every single trip in the band. You know, like every time we were there, we were listening to Weird Al at some point. <laughs> and that's, that's just that connection. You gotta, gotta keep it going. Now my daughter listens to Al and I don't see her stopping at any point. <laughs> That's great. Does she have a favorite album or song or? Uh, my Bologna. Yeah. It's her favorite. <laughs> she loves Another One Rides the Bus. Um, Mellow When I'm Dead. Wow. Okay. It's, Look at her taste. That's so yeah. great. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's kind of her jam. <laughs> Very cool. She has like dances to all of them too, which is just even funnier to watch because I don't know where she gets these dances from. Cause she's doing like a snapping thing and she's, she's not really a YouTube kid. Right. So like, I don't she just kind of like assumes that this is what you do to this type of music and she's not wrong. I mean, that's what you do. All right. So what's the next project with Weird Al? Oh, they're, oh. they're in the pipeline right now. Like we are. Oh, for sure. <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> you know I did we're, hit him. We're just trying to play it cool. I, I hit him up when I got down here. I was like, like yo, dude, I'm staying. I'm, 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 I'm out in L.A. I'm going to be writing for a couple of weeks. And he wrote me back and said, "Well, I probably won't see you, but that's cool. <laughs> I was like, Please, you just come over. <laughs> come hang. I got COVID test. I got it all. Come, come and hang out. <laughs> I'll sneak over at some point." <laughs> Totally. That's so great. Guys, this has just been incredible. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast yet again, talking all about this amazing thing. Thanks for putting together not only an incredible song and video that features Weird Al, but one with such a, an amazing message with, you know, the proceeds going to the PTM Foundation, helping the Navajo Water Project, and you guys are, are you know, matching fan donations, and it's just Everything about this is so awesome and positive and amazing. So we're, we're so happy to have had you on and, and got to be part of this, you know, whole thing that's going on. 
Yeah, thanks yeah, for having course. us. Thank again. you so much for yeah. Always a pleasure. Yeah, thanks for doing what you do. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Spread the word. Celebrate out. Hi, this is Dr. Demento, and I'm speaking to you on Dave and Ethan's 2,000-inch Weird Al podcast. Stay demented. That was so great. It is always awesome to talk to John and Zach. They're such big Weird Al fans, and they love talking about Weird Al. Now, you can check out our first interview with John and Zach back on episode 19-inch, available on our website, 2000inch.com or weirdalpodcast.com. I was so surprised at how quickly they were on board to get this recorded. I would have been totally happy talking to them in like a month about this, but they're like, hey, how about the next day we record this? And we're like, yes! <laughs> <laughs> so it was incredible. We, we got to chat with them last weekend. We got to see the video early. We got to hear the song. And it was just so, I think you said it best, Dave, pretty stinking majestic. What a great song, video, message, all of the above is just so incredible. I just can't believe it. I know we said it in the interview, but it is such a powerful song, such a powerful music video, and just the message that it gives is just phenomenal. I mean, it's really becoming one of my favorite Weird Al songs. It is really great, and I agree, Dave. It is one of my favorites now. It's been stuck in my head. <laughs> ever since I've heard it and I, I keep listening to it and it's just it's so catchy and I love the part where Al comes in just musically I love his verse where it starts and then I love when the beat kind of drops and it changes to this different style of music later on with the jingle dancer it's just there's so many great elements of the song and then the video just expands on that and makes it just even more amazing yeah, the video is phenomenal as well. And just that transition from Al turning into the coyote, that is just, <laughs> that is pretty stinking majestic. That is beautiful. <laughs> is well done. It's one of my favorite moments, if not my favorite moment in the music. Yeah. <laughs> I really, I want like a t-shirt of Al transforming into the coyote or like, you know, one of those like images where like you move it side to side, lenticular or whatever. I want one of Al turning into the coyote on a t-shirt. So when I move, people see Al turning into a coyote and then back into Al. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be pretty cool. That would be pretty cool. Speaking of t-shirts, Portugal the Man through their ptmfoundation.org website, they put out a limited edition shirt for the song and music video. And collectors, you're going to want to pick this one up because it does have Weird Al's name on it. It's a super cool shirt. It's a long sleeve shirt. And all of the proceeds benefit their Water is Life grant. And while I was picking up the limited edition shirt, I grabbed another shirt. There's some really cool ones on there. Anti-racism stuff. All of them benefit charities. So you're going to want to check those out. They're really cool. Check out those cool shirts over at ptmfoundation.org. And for information on how to purchase the song and to view the video, head on over to portugaltheman.com. Yes, and even if you've already watched the video, watch it. 10, 15, 27 more times by the song on iTunes. I think, Dave, we should do everything we can to not only support this awesome cause, but support making this song be a top 40 hit. Yeah, it would be really cool if it was a top 40 hit. Not just because it's a top 40 hit, which it deserves to be, but because if it was a top 40 hit, then Al would potentially be the first musician to have a top 40 hit in five separate decades. And for a dollar twenty or whatever it is to buy a song on iTunes, it's totally worth it. Well, Ethan, I think we finally figured out the question that's been bugging us since the middle of May. <laughs> what were those pictures that Suzanne Yankovic posted over on her Instagram page of Al, the camera crew, and the drone? Yes. I am so relieved that we finally know what that special secret project she was hinting about was. It was, of course, this <laughs> music video. And to further back up that this was that project, Suzanne even tweeted out some additional behind-the-scenes photos from the video shoot. Al retweeted them, so you can go check those out. They're really great. Well, believe it or not, this brand new video by Portugal the Man is not the only Weird Al news this week. There actually was another video that Weird Al was in. Yeah, so the band Postal Service put together this audition video looking for new members to join their band, all as a big promotion for Headcount's Make Your Vote Count campaign. 
Al shows up very briefly in the video and he's asked to sing a song and which he reluctantly does. He does, you know, kind of improvise a little ditty. Now, back in 2013, there was another Postal Service audition video that was released. And Al is actually also in that one playing the accordion. He covers one of their songs. It's really fun to check out. We sent out a tweet with a screenshot from the video featuring Yanni and Al himself liked our tweet. Yes, and then later in the week, on two separate occasions, Al liked our comments on his Instagram posts, effectively giving us a Weird Al social media-like hat trick. Yeah, and speaking of social media, over on our favorite website, shakewell.com, S-H-A-K-E-W-E-L-L-E dot C-O-M, did you know that there are links to social media pages? Links to social media pages on shakewell.com, S-H-A-K-E-W-E-L-L-E dot C-O-M. Yeah, links to Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and even Twitter. Well, whose accounts are they? Oh, Bob Cummins Jr. Who is Bob Cummins Jr.? Does it matter? Visit shakewell.com. S-H-A-K-E-W-E-L-L-E dot C-O-M. Now, suspiciously, just hours after posting episode 75 inch last week you know where we talked about how the gregory brothers hadn't yet posted the stems for who's it gonna be from the we're all doomed video guess what they posted the stems to who's it gonna be on their patreon coincidence well maybe but let's throw the facts out on the table here last time they added the stems to bad hombres nasty women at our request, and the timing and our huge influence leads us to believe that we are at least somewhat responsible for them posting the stems to who's it going to be this time as well. Now, what's really interesting is the vocal track that they posted, it actually mistakenly has one of Al's parts doubled with an unused verse that he sang. Now, it's really hard to hear, and you know, as of this recording, it has not yet been fixed, but we are really curious to try and figure out what these alternate lyrics are. So we're going to play the clip right here. Let us know on group.2000inch.com. Give us a call at our official hotline, 347-SPATULA. Let us know what you think that alternate verse says. I have been sad of questions, but still got a while. If you need it's help, time to get down the bars. Let's see how you freestyle. Ooh, that's going to be tough, but I bet our keen-eared listeners will be able to figure that one out. Oh, I hope so, because I tried and I could not. <laughs> <laughs> we have an update to share on Bermuda's brand new book, Black and White and Weird All Over. Due to delays relating to COVID, the release date has been moved back to November 17th from the original date of October 27th. Now, we've waited 37 years to see these pictures I think we can wait a couple more weeks, don't you think, Dave? I don't want to wait. I want to see him now. <laughs> <laughs> well, on the bright side, this is really great news for those who have yet to pre-order the book. You still have time. You can get a signed copy, and you can get the exclusive postcards by pre-ordering over at BookSoup.com. It's going to be really cool to have those postcards. I'm so glad i've gotten my order in yeah i'm definitely looking forward to seeing those postcards and to getting my copy of black and white and weird all over even if i gotta wait another three weeks it's gonna be totally totally worth it now luckily ethan you and i did get something to help us hold over you know the additional three week wait that we're gonna have to wait for <laughs> black and white and weird all over bermuda sent us these really awesome amazing blank book plates for our collections so book plates, if you're not aware, this is something in the publishing industry where instead of an author signing a physical book, they'll sign what are called book plates, which are essentially really cool stickers that have their signature. They get sent to bookstores and then those bookstores stick them in their books and they can have the autographed copies available. It is so awesome that we got to see a sneak peek of what the book plates are going to look like. And they look amazing. I mean, they're two totally unused pictures that don't appear anywhere else in the book and the book plates actually have the number 27 on them not once but twice <laughs> so there's another <laughs> shout out to weird al fans and there's a blank space for bermuda to sign but what's really cool about the book plates that he sent us is that he sent us book plates that were unsigned which makes them pretty rare for our collections because any book plate that gets out in the public is going to be pre-signed by bermuda so i'm really happy to have some rare unsigned 
book plates in our collection. It is really funny. Once you get to the level of collecting that Dave and I are at, sometimes <laughs> you're more excited by having something not autographed. <laughs> <laughs> well, I figure I can always get Bermuda to autograph it next time I see him. <laughs> Negating the rarity of the blank book plates that he did send us. <laughs> now, there's some other really big Bermuda news, and that is, of course, he shared a picture of his Chia Pet. Now, even Bermuda is getting in on the Weird Al Chia Pet fun. Now, in his picture, you can see that his Chia Pet is growing very nicely. He <laughs> even added his little Chia mustache to it. It's really cool looking. <laughs> it must be so weird to water, you know, your boss and friend's head every day. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, my boss doesn't like it when I pour water on his head, so I don't know how Bermuda gets away with it. <laughs> well, speaking of Chia Pets, Dave, how is your Chia Al doing? You know, my Chia Al is still hanging in there. It's still doing pretty well. It's still got a full head of hair. I think the mustache that I tried to put on has completely fallen off at this point. But it's still alive. I still water it every day. It's still doing pretty well. I don't know how much longer it has. I don't know how long these things last. But, you know, it's still hanging in there. And hopefully I'll still have a Chia update for next week as well. <laughs> I think it's kind of funny. What if it was meant for the mustache to fall off, and then in a few weeks the glasses fall off, and then suddenly <laughs> it's a modern Al Chia Pet. <laughs> now that would be really pretty stinking majestic if that were to happen. <laughs> you know, technically, if you were to eat Al's Chia hair, it would be vegan. Yeah, I know, but you don't need to be vegan to enjoy chia seeds, and you don't need to be vegan either to enjoy delicious Mexican food from our friends over at Burrito Burrito in Troy, New York. This week's episode is brought to you in part by vegan Mexican restaurant Burrito Burrito in Troy, New York, home of the two-pound double wrapped in a quesadilla Burrito Burrito. Come on down to Burrito Burrito and Burrito Burrito, your Burrito Burrito. Find them at BurritoSquared.com and at Burrito Squared on Instagram. And remember, not every burrito is a Burrito Burrito Burrito, but every Burrito 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 can be Burrito Burritoed. And every Monday, check out wizard burger and every wednesday don't forget to eat some chia seeds and eat some of weird al's hair each week we can bring you this podcast absolutely free thanks to sponsors like brito brito angel valenzuela and his son david cash jackson scoggins and all of our amazing patreon supporters like cat stan and so many more Revenue from our incredible supporters on patreon.com slash 2000 inch is how we can afford to continue doing what we love, which is making fantastically fun, funny, and family friendly Weird Al podcasts for you each and every week. We'd absolutely appreciate your consideration in joining our amazing Patreon family for as little as $1 per month. Another way to support the podcast is to head on over to the official Dave and Ethan's 2000 Inch Weird Al podcast merchandise shop and pick up and wear some cool, amazing merchandise. We got some great items in our Gill and Chill line of clothing. We've got some cool t-shirts and we've even got Gill and Chill leggings. And once you've got all that, you can even pick up a Gill and Chillo. Head to toe, Gill and Chill. Find us online at weirdalpodcast.com or 2000inch.com. And please join our Facebook group by heading to group.2000inch.com for episode discussions and other exclusive content. Keep those top five even worse lists coming in. Many of our listeners have posted their lists so far, and we love reading them and comparing them to ours and to other people. If you haven't posted your list yet, you've got one more week to do it, so head on over to group.2000inch.com and get those lists posted. And don't forget to tag all of your fun Weird Al or podcast-related posts on social media using hashtag 2000inch and hashtag Gill and Chill, and be sure to follow at 2000inch on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram to stay up to date on all things Dave and Ethan and Al. Make sure you share our posts, tell your friends about the podcast, and we absolutely love it when you guys leave messages on our 27 hour a day podcast hotline, 347 Spatula. You might even hear your message on the air. Did you hear that? I sure did. That means someone left a message on our 27-hour-a-day podcast hotline, the 347 Spatula Hotline. The official hotline of Dave and Ethan's 2008 Weird Al podcast is sponsored by Angel Valenzuela and David Cash, two amazing Weird Al fans and podcast sponsors. Let's see what we got on our hotline this week. Hey, guys. It's Jackson Scoggins. 
I'm uh, calling from the future again. I'm actually calling from the year 2072. You guys just received the first ever star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame for a website, 2000inch.com. You know, the actual website itself was nominated for a Webby. It was up against, you know, classics like Google.com, Facebook.com, Shakewell.com. That is S-H-A-K-E-W-E-L-L-E dot C-O-M. You know, I mean, tons of great websites were up for the uh, Webby this year. But 2000inch.com on its now, you know, 2000th incarnation of the website, y'all keep on updating it more and more, you know, coding, you know, uh, through the roof stuff going on on the website, 2000inch.com. And because of that website, 2000inch.com, the website now is the first website with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. I've been out here for a good, I don't know, 36 hours, you know, browsing y'all's website, 2000inch.com. That's 2000inch.com. It's really been a great, you know, couple of couple of days here celebrating 2000inch.com placement on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys later. I'm uh, coming from the year 2072, right? I don't know. Thanks for the message, Jackson. How amazing that even our website wins a Hollywood star in the future. And seeing that Jackson is obviously a time traveler, Jackson must have got to hear part two of our top five definitive songs off of the album, Even Worse. So, Jackson, no spoilers, please. Now, I feel like I'm a time traveler because I know I've heard that noise before. All right, well, let's see. Maybe there's another message. Hello, Dave and Ethan. This is your old friend uh, Chris here, all the way from Canada. And uh, I don't know what to say. I am just literally uh, beyond amazed. I want to thank uh, Ethan for uh, informing me via Facebook that Weird Al's loyal and faithful drummer and best friend in the world, John Bermuda Schwartz, was kind enough to actually take his unique depiction, his Hanna-Barbera depiction that I made for him and the rest of the band back during their Strings Attached tour when I went to see it in Toronto and turned it into his Facebook profile. I just... I know it shouldn't be that big of a deal, but to me it is because I just can't believe that such a famous drummer would do something like that. I'm just... I am beyond overwhelmed. I am extremely excited. My inner geek is just going crazy while my macho man exterior is trying so hard to fight back tears of joy. <laughs> it's just that crazy. I I don't know what to say. Ethan, for starters, I want to thank you for letting me know about this. That is so awesome. And uh, as for uh, Bermuda, if you're out there listening to this podcast, thank you, my friend. It is truly an honor to have such a great uh i know this might be uh, pushing it but as far as i'm concerned i'm so happy that a true rock and roll legend like yourself did something like that it's just it's just a true honor so thank you both and if you'll excuse me i gotta go find a nice corner somewhere to cry tears of joy excuse me and that's why the award shows all have time limits for acceptance speeches. <laughs> but truly, Chris, that's pretty stinking majestic. Not only did Al share your artwork on Instagram at the time you gave it to him last summer, now it's Bermuda's official Facebook picture. Huge congratulations. But as long as I have you guys on the phone, I guess I might as well uh, throw in one more cool thing. Uh, Ethan, because you did such a nice job doing this for me, I'm going to let you in on a little secret for both you and Dave. I've got something for the both of you, but you're not going to get it until Halloween. And by that, I don't mean Halloween night. I actually mean pretty darn close to Halloween. But yeah, you're going to have to wait. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Boo, I don't want to wait. Boo. Hey, if you guys can wait patiently for a Weird Al concert... Then you can wait for this. Come prende. Okay, I'm glad we understand each other. All right, that's it. Once again, thank you, and you two will have to wait for your surprise. Okay, 
Bye. Chris, thank you for the call. Thanks for your continued support of the podcast. And we absolutely cannot wait to see what's in store for us this Halloween. You already know where to find us, but do yourselves a favor and head on over to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Amazon Music, and or the podcast app of your choice and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss our new episodes every Wednesday. Thanks once again to John and Zach from Portugal the Man for joining us on this episode. Thanks for Jackson and Chris for your phone calls, and thanks for Atlantic Records for sucking. Thank you to all of our listeners, all of our subscribers, all of our Patreon supporters and sponsors, and everyone who made this episode and podcast possible. Be sure to tune in next week for episode 77 inch for the spine tingling, teeth chattering, butt slapping conclusion of our even worse definitive top five songs list with our friend Angel Valenzuela. <laughs> That was David Ethan's 2008 Weird Al Podcast, episode 76 inch. You're a vampire. You're a vampire. You're an LA vampire. <laughs>